News First, Newsline Prime with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you. This is Newsline Prime. Live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clambo. It's turned out to be not so much of a bad day, but it has been generally wet and wet. Uh, but um, there's plenty, of ha uh, plenty happening in the world of politics. And we've got a election date announced. And a bit more. But to discuss these matters about elections, we've got Mr. Rona Hetiarachi here. Um, very good evening to you, Mr. Hetiarachi. Good Arachi. evening, Pass. Yeah. And your organization is, well, I know that you're probably more uh, better known as uh, uh, from the March the 12th movement. Yeah. Uh, but you also undertake um, monitoring. Exactly. I think that is our prime responsibility. Right. We have been uh, observing elections almost uh, three decades now. That right. is that is our main uh, focus. But uh, I think uh, I mean, you know that uh, doing elections observations decades and decades where we realize the, the quality of the representative is a big, big issue in the country. So mm -hmm. that is why we try to engage with the many other civil society network and the business trade union and trying to bring all of them and uh, try to make the, the change of the political culture. As a result, the March 12 uh, movement is came out. So now we are more concerned about the, uh, the March 12 movement and the clean politics uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. Do you think that after so many years of doing this, monitoring, that you are lulled into a, a form of uh, complacency? Do you think that your organization as well, have you got sort of used to this thing now? Yeah. And is there, is there any possibility that you all are not monitoring as well as you would like to? Well, uh, up to now, when, when, if you look at uh, the 1980s where we started mm. the situation on the elections now actually we are much better uh, and I think the situation we are before 2006 yeah, I, I think you can remember some of these uh, the main candidates even the presidential candidate when they go to the polling stations yeah. someone has cast their vote oh, even yes. the general Kobeka do a Andro Bandar Naik so with our interventions I mean as Pafrol and as well as the other election monitoring organizations so, and also the, with the effort of the Elections Commission and the police. Now we don't see that kind of things. And right. the Elections Day itself is election management. I mean, compare with the past, compare with the regions, we are in a satisfactory level. But still there are some areas where we need to improve, for example, over, uh, overseas voting, and uh, even the inside the country, there are some people on the elections day they, they are not get, uh, getting chance to uh, vote. Yeah. Even the disabled people, there are some areas, and we don't have a uh, the base registry. There are many areas where we need to uh, improve. Uh, but I think uh, in basic uh, the people's uh, choice, yeah. uh, uh, I think uh, elections commission is able to. Uh, 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 manage the the proper elections uh, system in the country, and um, but we've had uh, three sort of elections now: um, the local, the, we've had a presidential before that, and then the parliamentary elections as well. Um, been relatively safe or free of too much of violence. Would you agree with that, or would you like to see it better? Of course, the violence. Uh, uh, I mean, again, if you look at the last couple of elections uh, there was no much violence violence yeah. of course there yeah but uh, again the i mean we always we have to compare with the past and compare with the other regions yeah but uh, i mean the election is not only the violence yeah i mean there are so many other uh, aspect we need to consider if we are really think about free and fair elections yeah uh, for the coming elections i'm a little worried about hate speech and i'm worried about misinformations, mm. disinformations, and also uh, uh, misuse of the government resources and the government power. We have we have very bad experience even in the last uh, presidential elections. Mm. So those are quite serious issue where we are looking uh, at as a elections observer. It will be in the coming presidential elections, uh, it, 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 the same situation maybe can occur on the parliamentary elections as well. Mm -hmm. Um, on Newsline Prime, as you know, we encourage you to send us your questions by SMS 
0772-300-305. Card coming up on your screen about now. And also, of course, uh, just to remind you, in case you've just joined us, we are in uh, conversation with Mr. Rona Hetiarachi from PEFRO and also, obviously, from the March the 12th movement. And you, you will probably remember March the 12th movement. Now, Mr. Hetiarachi, I want to ask you this. What about all these other candidates? Uh, prox I, I, I like to, I refer to them as proxy candidates because they are really there to uh, snatch a few votes here and a few votes there. And I think that in an in a ambience like we are in now, where there appears to be uh, widespread uh, discontent, uh, because obviously pre-2015, uh, the public were probably extremely aware that um, we were going deeper and deeper into some form of an authoritarian state and uh, family power and bandism and all sorts of things. And then in came this Yapalne yeah, government. They promised us many things, but essentially good governance. And the level of corruption uh, and uh, misuse of funds um, is still there. So, in all this, do you think that, is there anything you can do about these proxy uh, candidates? candidates? Well, uh, if you look at again in the 2015 elections, you are perfectly uh, correct. There were about uh, 19 candidates in the last presidential elections. Yeah. But except the main two candidates, rest of the 17 people, all together, all yeah. together, yeah. they got on only around uh, 138,000 votes. And I think we can remember there were two candidates which is similar name to the, the main candidate, one Mr. Sirisena and one Mr. Rajapaksa. Yeah. That is mislead the, uh, the voters. <laughs> and, and some of the candidates uh, on the last minute, yeah. they will uh, publicly say, I will sub uh, this this person is really good his policy is really good for the country yeah. so we are going to support this man but there's no some some parties we know that they have only two people three people yeah. maybe 10 people maximum some parties we know that mm -hmm. but then again for us i think we need to respect where some parties are they're not getting much vote but they are still contesting because so they're they right exactly and also they have their own uh, policies they know that they are not uh, going to win but they are still believe they are uh, the policies. Some there at least there are few parties, e even in the last election, even in the coming elections, we sh we we have seen that. Mm. But uh, the the other issue which you mentioned about the the the, the corruptions yeah. in the last election, of course, yes, the 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 main slogan was the corruptions in last presidential elections. That's right. And also their main slogan was good governance. And uh, the other slogan was uh, reduce the presidential power and abolish the presidential system. But unfortunately, they were not accept the 19th Amendment and the RTI. There are few areas where we, are, we, we got something, but in generally, yeah. I think they were not able to deliver whatever they promised uh, at the elections period. Why do you think they, weren't, they were unable to deliver? I think... Uh, I mean, the both parties, uh, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they had some clear-cut idea from the beginning, from the beginning, and the, maybe the first three, four, three months. But after that, they were all were in a power uh, struggle of the, their own power circle. Mm. And they wanted to uh, uh, have their own, own strong uh, party positions. And they wanted to, I mean... Uh, in publicly, in first few months, they were good each other, and they negotiate, they discuss. That is what they call the the good governance. So the, the different policies. <laughs> I'm came sorry, together. but I, I, I'm laughing because you said first three months. You've got the timing slightly out, because in this, in not even the second month, they embarked on the bond scam. But apart from that, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but that that is a different case. But yes. even that period, they were not. Uh, uh, the raise it out. That's right. I mean, That's they, right. they they engage each other and they try to cover up. Absolutely. Usually. But when it's come to their own power struggle, power 
a circle, then they class each other. That is, and also the politics, I am not saying all the politics, I mean even at the moment what is happening today, the politicians, whether they are genuine enough uh, to do something for the country, what, what happened in the cabinet today, wh why they are bringing this uh, abolishing the presidential system in the last minute, whether mm. it is uh, uh, for the country, I mean if they really want to do it, I mean both leaders would have to do it well in advance. Good. So, this, this is really for their power and their, their own sustainability. Survival. For their own survival. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the people of the country they need to realize this. I'm not saying only on the the existing the the uh, the ruling coalitions. Even in the opposition party, we know everybody is consider the first their main consideration in their personal uh, uh, power game. Then they will go with their family. They will go with their uh, friends. And thirdly, they will consider the party. Maybe finally, they will little think about the country also. So, this is really unfortunate. But they can run like this, they can go like this because there is no such a public demand in this country. Mm -hmm. So, that is unfortunate situation. Even the academic people, even some civil society people, they try to engage with the, the politicians and the political party and yeah. try to get some benefit out of it. This is really a sad situation. It's very sad, isn't it? But what about how, how do we control? You know, can we talk about the cost of all these elections, uh, the presidential election? What, what sort of, um, <coughs> sorry, the, what sort of range of cost is? The, what we clearly know is only the Elections Commission expenses. Yeah. It will be uh, 3,000 to 4,000 million. It's uh, itself in the I mean elections commission expenses itself for the oh, one elections okay. three thousand to four thousand um, uh, millions. Yes, but we know uh, uh, from the political parties uh, side. Yeah, there may be there may be a billions, but yeah. there is no system in this country to track the uh, the campaign finance. There right. is no campaign finance regulation in this country. Actually, as PAFRA, we try to bring the campaign finance regulations two years back and with collaboration with the CMEV and also the elections commissions and we have draft something, we hand over it to the president and parliamentarians, but it did not uh, take it to the at least cabinet. But the later the elections commissions draft another one, uh, actually it is quite good one mm. and now it is went up to the I think uh, the attorneys department. Uh, but it will take some time, but uh, up to now there is no way to track the campaign finance. But I mean if you look at the uh, the newspapers, uh, the, the radio, TV, you can see how, how much money they spent for their propaganda. I mean if you go around the uh, country, you can see how much money they spent for the posters and cutout. Mm. I think within next couple of days time there will be big posters, cutouts across the country. Uh, but uh, according to the elections law, the elections commission is clearly stated even in the day before yesterday, the meeting which we had, yeah. uh, the limitation of the uh, the campaign. Yeah. Um, but do you think that any of these political parties that are now in play in Sri Lanka, I mean, uh, I know there are other parties, but it's uh, basically the SLFP the, and, and their offshoot, the SLPP and of course United National Party who are constantly in one or the other or both in, nowadays is in power. And do you think that they will have the determination, the commitment to introduce campaign financing laws, especially, especially in the light of the inability or the unwillingness of some members of parliament to provide the most basic thing like their asset declarations. Yeah, I think it's little doubt uh, as party we know that uh, they are playing with the politics. But if there is a public demand, mm. they have to bring these campaign finance regulations. And also I, I need to say that there are some young parliamentarians from the both parties, even the SLP and Pohot Tour and also the UNP, there are young groups, they wanted to make some difference. There are. 
but not maybe the leaders. But asset and liability, of course, it is in the law. But unfortunately, uh, there are some uh, loophole. You you can't get those uh, information and you can't publicize. You can get, but you can't publicize. Yeah. But then no point uh, if you can't challenge or if you can't analyze the previous uh, year situation and the next year situations. Even the coming elections, actually, uh, uh, with the elections commissioners meeting, uh, I request, I urge from the elections commission and also the party leaders whether they can submit their asset and liabilities declarations with the nominations. Mm -hmm. So the election commissioner check with the political party at the point, and uh, I think main parties they basically agree to submit their asset and liabilities uh, uh, declarations uh, uh, with the nomination papers in the coming presidential elections. But the issue here is, as I mentioned earlier, I mean it's just. Uh, they will take it and keep it. There is yeah. no way to check year by year and nobody knows whether they have given uh, true informations or false informations. But also in the case of the uh, asset and uh, liabilities declaration of the Prime Minister, when the RTI Commission went to court, they, did, they, they were able to, um, I think uh, Transparency International went to yeah, court and yeah, so on. Yeah. Um, the RTI Commission ordered that this be released, and yet the it is stuck at I think now it's stuck with the presidential secretariat. So clearly the law isn't robust enough to force them to provide that under under pain of losing your office or being jailed even. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I mean, if the law is of course. I mean, uh, the uh, law has to be law has to make sure that all these uh, things can take place. Yeah. But other than the law, I mean, if they are genuine enough, if they are genuine enough, because they are public uh, people's representative. Yeah. And they are the the leaders of the political party, and they are heading the country. So that is, they have the basic duty uh, that they need to declare their asset and liability in publicly. And some of the parliamentarian it's already done. Then yeah. they can show the public uh, they are uh, uh, not how, uh, how, corrupted people. Yeah, how clean they are. How clean they are. I mean, this is the opportunity. So that is why I am asking the, the coming presidential candidate also. They can show the public that how they are clean. I mean, I mean that doesn't say that just submitting the asset and liabilities doesn't say that they are clean people. Yeah. But at least they can start. They can show the public. We are ready. Mm. But unfortunately, the politician take it in a different way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if once somebody challenges, they also want to challenge. Indeed. But the people's point of view, we are not challenging. That is our right. Yeah. We need to know uh, our our representatives' uh, economic background, and we need to know they are corrupted people or a clean people. Indeed. I mean, they are they because they are taking decisions on behalf of our money. Indeed. Indeed. So. So they are responsible. And, and so would you welcome, uh, or, or put it another way, how absolutely essential or not is the need to monitor political financing? I think it's, it's must. It must. Because you know, I mean I will tell you one example. I can't, I can't tell exact place. Now at the moment we are running one court case. Yeah. Because one in the last local elections, uh, uh, one representative spent uh, nearly about around 40 million. It's a very small village. It's it's vote buying. Uh, we can say it's very clearly. Is, uh, was it? <coughs> sorry, was it very blatant the vote, vote uh, buying? Well, in this case, uh, uh, I, I I can't say the exact place because the case is going on. Yeah. Uh, they were uh, giving uh, the uh, electricity connections, water connections. It take uh, I think uh, thirty, forty thousand per one family. It's uh -huh. a huge money, and direct. It's it's we can call it direct board buying. The other issue is uh, if there is no campaign finance uh, limitations. Political finance and campaign finance is uh, uh, little different things. But the, I mean we need to bring uh, the political finance. It's the overall one. But when you come back to the campaign finance again, uh, if there is no limitations, yeah. they will spend millions and millions. 
and the vote buying is one side and the the the, the serious issue is yeah. if you utilize your own resources yeah. once you get elected yeah. you have to find a way uh, to get those money back if somebody in your friends or business people help you to uh, your campaign then you need to allow them to uh, uh, the maybe uh, double or maybe triple to get back those monies mm. so this is the serious situation this lead up to corruptions this lead up to the corruptions if there is a uh, limitations it will help us to even control the corruptions uh, in the country and um, um, Mr. Tiarachi, sorry we we are in conversation on Newsline Prime with Mr. Rona Hetjarachi from PAFRO and of course the March 12th movement. Uh, now Mr. Hetjarachi, tell me this. There is some talk and today there was a special cabinet meeting and we had some people come outside and uh, members of parliament including Sajid Premadasa, Ralph Hakim uh, and you can catch that on the news at 9 o'clock tonight um, on TV1 of course. Um, and now they're saying that there's some move to abolish the presidency. <laughs> but this is yesterday they announced the date of the election. Today there's some discussion. <laughs> what about all the money that has already been spent? That, that's just the finance aspect. But well, how do y'all, I mean, y'all must have already spent some money getting ready and so on and then snap they may not have it actually this is really joke this is really joke for us i mean abolish the presidential system i think you can remember it started 1994 yeah. with the president chandrika and how many president promised us even that this present regime this is one of their the main slogan during the campaigning period during the last elections period yeah and they came into power now it's almost four and a half years they didn't take any step to abolish the system. They reduced the power. I mean, of course, we need, we need to salute for that. That is also only, only from the first few months. I mean, mm -hmm. they may have a, the, the, the clear idea or they respect what they promised to the public only for a few months. But after that, they didn't do anything. Why suddenly they are thinking about this abolition? of uh, presidential system mm. that is because of their power struggle again and and also this shows us there is no democratic practice inside the in, 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 in party politics not only the uh, the the UNP or, but all or the, other political parties yeah. they don't have uh, uh, democratic uh, practice the mm. party leader is so much powerful whatever he his decisions the rest of the people has to follow so this is really the political game. They are not genuine enough. I mean, if they're really genuine, as I mentioned earlier also, they would have done it uh, well in advance. Mm -hmm. Why they wait until the elections commissioner declare the, uh, the elections? Or even at least the JVP brought this up to the parliament. And the, if they really want, they would have support the, the, the JVP proposal. But up to now, they didn't do anything. Now only, they realize this will be an exciting uh, point for them to uh, pacing the presidential elections. So this is where people need to understand what is the, the politician's game uh, with the people. Um, but it's obviously very, very sad that uh, this sort of thing is happening, especially when we supposedly live in a very robust and a thriving democracy, um, you know, and tolerance for each other and so on and so forth. Um, do you see anything changing in the in in the at the next election? You mean the the electoral system uh, change or what? I don't know. Do you, the the general behavior of all these pe all, all these people who uh, I mean yes, the Sri Lanka is rather myopic in this in the sense that people you know yesterday's um, let's say accused. Uh, today's <laughs> leaders. Exactly, exactly. I don't think that within next. Uh, I mean, there are, there are many things can happen, but yeah. not favor to the people of the country. It will be favor to the the politicians and the political party. That, it can be happen. Uh, those who are in a different views, uh, those who challenge each other, they can be in a one platform. 
for their benefit, not for the people. The unfortunately, there is no public demand in this country. Even the educated people, even the uh, the other, uh, for example, the, the religious leaders, even the uh, artists, I mean, they all engage, I am not saying the all of them, but mostly they engage with the the, the political party and they are trying to get some sort of benefit. Mm. This is really unfortunate situation. Those who can raise voice, I mean the, the village level innocent people, those who are running day by day for their uh, survival, they can't uh, raise these things. But those who can, uh, but unfortunately they are not even touch on these things. So then the politician can play whatever their game yeah. until they uh, get elected. So this is uh, what, what is happening at the moment. So uh, I don't think uh, even next two months uh, period, other than their, uh, uh, whatever they do for their benefits, mm. uh, I think nothing will be happen for the people of this country. And what is the role of the people of this country during elections then? Actually that is a good question, Paraz. Uh, I mean we, we do have a nearly two months period. And I know that uh, what are, who are the candidate, at least uh, two major political parties. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we do not know one party yet. But uh, definitely there will be a candidate uh, from that party also. The pe people need to, I mean especially uh, the people uh, need to look at their manifestos. Mm. But manifestos also again if you see the last couple of elections manifesto, whatever the party. Ba it's basically okay, mm -hmm. but the problem is the implementation uh, mechanism. None of these manifestos include how they are going to implement the policies. What are the uh, the time frame? How they are going to financing uh, uh, for implementing these uh, policies? Uh, what is the structure? What is the mechanism they are going to use? What are the follow up uh, actions? In the manifesto itself, doesn't. Uh, say anything. It's meaningless, meaningless uh, like budget every year we are getting from the government part side. So the manifest, we need to pressurize the political party, whatever they are, the policy document, manifestos, mm -hmm. it has to be, uh, 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 their structure should be the policy, uh, implementation time period, financing, follow up, mechanism, all should be there. So we need to pressure the political party to come those. Uh, uh, with, those uh, with those details. And also uh, they b people need to look at the campaign, uh, uh, how, how the p candidates and their parties and their supporters are running the, the candidate, whether they violate the elections law, uh, whether they uh, misuse the government resources and the government power and how they uh, uh, damage the environment. So mm. those things also one side where we need to look at. And the other uh, side, I think uh, the president of this country, whoever come into power, he should be a visionary person. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, uh, the uh, compare with before 2019, the president doesn't have much power in the coming president. But in case if the same person uh, 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 becoming a president, and uh, the same political party get the majority of the political uh, the parliament then they, uh, he or she sh will have some sort of power, not, not from the constitutions, but again mm -hmm. the, with the political party structure. So uh, we need to look at the capacity, we need to look at the attitude of the, uh, the, the candidate, we need to look at his or he, her behavior mm -hmm. and uh, we need to see whether he is able to uh, deliver something for the, the country. I mean it's not easy for us to decide uh, the candidate because we don't have much choice. We mm. may have one or two or three because as you mentioned there are uh, many candidates will be in the scene but the credible uh, or the real candidate may be only two or three. So we, have, we, we don't have much choice but among these uh, the candidate we can select less worse persons as our, uh, we, can't, we, we don't have options or chance to select the best persons, yeah. less worse man we can select as our uh, head of the country. I see. Um, as we come to the, um, to the uh, end of uh, Newsline Prime, uh, just a quick message to remind you that Newsline um, broadcasts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on TV1 from 7 to 7.30 a.m. 
And on Thursday and Friday, uh, Newsline Prime is from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. And, uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, from 8 to 8.30. Cards coming up on your screen. Uh, must be a long day. But we're in conversation with uh, the, the final stages with uh, Mr. Rona Hetiarachi. Um, what would you like to see? What would you like to see from all the parties who are contesting? Would you like to see, give, would you like them to give an undertaking that they will commit to new legislation uh, to uh, control expenditure, you know, on uh, elections? Um, and bring an element of transparency by declaring openly uh, on maybe on a website uh, as to who has given them uh, the larger donations perhaps um, and because it's the larger donations that may uh, also feature in any corruption scandal. Uh, and also they can control the candidate if one person's coming with the big money and he, he or she support one candidate, specific candidate. Yeah. So in the other day, he is duty bound to uh, support the man. So if you get the bigger amount of money, then you will be finished in your political career. You can you can you can elect, but in the other day, you you can't deliver whatever you promise to the public. So it is very serious. But as and you what's your final message to people then? <laughs> well. Uh, I, 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 I take the opportunity to say in a different things. Uh, as March 12 movement, uh, yeah. you mentioned. Now we are trying to bring the, the, the key candidate in one table on uh, uh, Sugata Das Stadium. And we are trying to ask the burning questions, uh, the pressing questions in this country on 5th of October. You can look at, you can see, I mean, you can engage with us in a different way. You can send your questions to us. What are the questions you think that you need to raise? We need to raise from the our head of the country in coming future, and also you can uh, uh, see it uh, on fifth. Uh, hopefully, if the media mm. support us, it will be live telecast, and you can look at those uh, uh, how the the, the candidate uh, uh, are giving the answer. And and based on that, that you can get some sort of idea the which person will be uh, good for you, good for our country. Rona Hetiarachi, thank you very much for being on Newsline Prime. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you on our network at uh, any time, and we, I'm sure we'll see more of you uh, in the weeks ahead. Thank you. Thank you very us. much, and that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Prime. Take care, and we'll see you again tomorrow evening. In the meantime, have a great evening, and of course, God bless. News First, Newsline Prime with Araz Shaukatali.